So we covered a few basic essential topics. Uh, we talked about different products and, and how they sell online. Specifically right now, we're gonna to stick to Amazon and the Amazon Marketplace. It is the largest online marketplace. I'm sure many of you are Prime members with over 100 million Prime members in the US alone. And now we know that over 60% of the sales that happen on Amazon are from sellers like myself, just ordinary people who sell out of their garage, out of their homes, out of a warehouse like this or other warehouses around the country. And there are plenty of $100,000 sellers who do over $100,000 in annual sales who sell out of their homes, uh, over a million. That's when I say plenty, I mean there are over a million. It's a huge number. Amazon had that report come out a few months ago. I'll have it up online soon so you guys can take a look at that as well if you're unfamiliar with it or you could just Google it. Um, but that's because more and more people are purchasing online. I think now the number is about 15% when it comes to online retail versus brick and mortar. Brick and mortar is when somebody goes into a physical store and purchases the product in the store, you know, the old fashioned way. Well now about 15% of all retail sales that happen in the US are happening online and that number is gonna to continue to grow. You know, uh, with my generation and the next, you know, my daughter, was using a tablet when she was two years old. So you could just imagine by the time she has a family of her own, how many people are gonna be buying online. Um, it's, gonna, it's the new norm. So more and more people are gonna be purchasing online and more and more people are gonna be selling online. Uh, some of the things that we covered today were discussing bundles and FN SKUs and FBA shipments, which means shipping to an Amazon fulfillment center. Um, but why, why bundle products? Like what's the purpose of bundling? Uh, maybe because you can sell a product that Amazon might not be selling, which gives you that competitive edge. Um, another reason is it adds value to the consumer, but why? Well, because you're able to save money, but why? Well, because shipping's gonna cost less versus sending one, but why? Well, because the carrier UPS, USPS, FedEx, DHL, or one of those last mile carriers, um, they charge for that first just just shipment, just to send the product. They're charging that addition, you know, that that fee right from the get go. And if you add a second one, that fee is not going to be as high because the product's already going to uh, be delivered to a certain location. If you add one more product to that. It, the fee is going to go up, but not as substantially. I mean, it's kind of like purchasing in volume. Shipping in volume works the same way. The more you ship to one location, the cheaper per unit it's going to be. Well, because it's cheaper per unit, you're able to pass that savings on to the consumer and also make more money at the same time. So, for instance, let's say this product will cost about $3 to ship to anywhere in the U.S., right? And if you add another product to it, it's going to cost, let's say, $5, somewhere around that range, about $5. Well, that means per unit now I paid $2.50 to ship versus when I was sending one, I was paying about three. So right there, I'm able to save, and those savings I'm able to pass on to the consumer. And the more and more you add to it, the less per unit it costs, and the more I could pass on to the consumer, the customer, and therefore, the more they purchase, or the larger the bundle is, the more money they can save. Uh, and also, they really can't purchase like this in the store, so it gives you another option from selling it in the store. One of the things that we'll cover later on, too, is variety packs. I know before I'll show you a cheesy one with the vino with the icebreakers, which I wouldn't recommend that. But you could put things together, like maybe, uh, different different scents of the Aveeno, right? Or a couple different lotions so that a consumer might want to try a lotion and they don't know which one's going to be best for them. Well, you make a variety pack with different lotion varieties that they can try out all different types, right? Um, there's, there's so many options out there. We go to trade shows throughout the year and the beauty is there's constantly new products, new brands, new companies coming out. And one of the things we'll be discussing too is like, creating your own private label. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but how about having your own brand of lotion? How about spending the time and really learning what natural products go best on your skin and work best for you, and then passing that on by creating a brand and a product that works for other customers because you put your time and effort into creating something of value. You know, it's not 
about making money, like of course that's the end goal, but really you will make money if your true end goal is to make a high quality product or provide a high quality service. What we do here is we provide high quality service. And we also have our own private label brands too, which are high quality and do really well. That's why I'm able to have a, a you know a warehouse of this size and, and be operating at the caliber that I'm able to. It's not because I, I studied hard and, and it's not because I had some investment given to me because none of those things happen. What happened here is I just put my butt to work and I really, uh, I, I, I just put all my time and effort into growing something of value, but passing that value on to people like you who purchase the products that, you know, I sell online and I'm not selling anything different from what other sellers are selling, but what I do do is I provide top quality service and I really make sure that the products that I'm pushing out are in the condition that a customer is going to expect it and if something goes wrong, I'm taking care of it. Now, the beauty of Amazon is Amazon will handle a lot of that for you when you ship it FBA. FBA means fulfilled by Amazon. So what that means is instead of us taking this product, packaging it, and then sending it to the customer, which we're going to have to then, you know, buy, buy the correct packaging for it. Um, we're going to have to pay for stamps or for a shipping label for it. We're going to have to print the shipping label for it. We're going to have to box just these two units to ship directly to the consumer, which is going to be very costly because remember we were talking about the, the cost of delivering to one location. If you're sending volume to one location, it's always cheaper than sending just a few products. You could think of it same thing as when you go shopping. Um, Obviously, if you're buying one or two of something, it's not going to be the same as if you go to Costco and you get 36 of that product. You're going to pay a lot less per unit. Um, essentially the same when you ship products. So FBA is shipping to one, two, or sometimes three Amazon fulfillment centers the products that you have prepared to go to the consumer. And then what Amazon does is they'll send it out to different fulfillment centers, about 12 different locations your product will sit, and that way the product can get to the customer within two days of them ordering it, and soon one day of them ordering it if they're a Prime member. So, like I said, there's 100 million Prime members out there. That means people who pay that annual membership fee, and they want that one to two day service plus all the other benefits that come with Prime. And so, when you send it to an Amazon Fulfillment Center, you will be one of those sellers that have the Prime badge. And having the Prime badge is what's going to get you the, the sale. And I can go a little bit deeper into that. What do I mean by the sale? I mean it gets you the buy box. What's the buy box? Well, a lot of you, or some of you, I don't know how many of you are really familiar with the inner workings of Amazon, but when you go purchase on Amazon, you'll see that price right in front of you. And most of the time, you'll click on that first price you see and you don't even look at who's selling the product. It's just what price is being offered at that current time. Well, that price that you're seeing, the top price, the main price that you're seeing, and I'll be putting up some screenshots and uh, really showing you on my computer screen, more so than just screenshots, but showing you on the computer um, what the buy box is on a desktop and then showing you on a mobile phone what the buy box is because maybe m many of you haven't even noticed that that where you're seeing the price right there on amazon.com is that somebody that has the buy box and on a mobile phone or a tablet you don't even have the other options well at least on the mobile you don't have the other options you only have one option right there to purchase from and that person seller has the buy box there are other options yes but they're in a size two font a little scroll a little bit down and you'll see you know uh, other sellers or uh, all other offers and then you click that and you can see the other offers but essentially most people they're buying on Amazon because a there's savings involved B it's efficient C it's quick and D they don't have the time so they don't have the time to go through the sellers they're just gonna click on the first seller the person who has the buy box and one of the reasons that Amazon provides a seller with the buy box is Amazon Prime so if your product is sent to an FBA center, it will have the Prime badge and that gives you more opportunity to 
have the buy box, which means more sales, which means more money, which means you can purchase more product, which means more investment in your company because hopefully you're not going to take that money and just spend it on yourself. You're going to invest in your company so your company can grow and continue to grow and become a larger investment, right? Um, there are a few different parameters as far as the reason a seller gets the buy box. Um, and we'll go into all of them. I don't want to jump it, jump the gun, but I will mention what they are here. Um, there's feedback. There's being prime or the shipping method used. Um, there's the price you're offering. There's the quantity you have in stock. There's your history with Amazon as well. And there's also how quick you respond to messages. So all of those parameters, Amazon has their algorithms. Everyone knows about them. Um, and the algorithm decides based on those parameters who's going to have the buy box at that time. Uh, pricing fluctuates on Amazon, who has the buy box fluctuates on a listing on Amazon, and it all depends on essentially the health of your Amazon account, how often you're going to have the buy box, so how often you're going to win selling the product to the customer. So very important stuff and we'll cover all that later. But um, I'm rambling on now. Uh, I guess I've been doing this a long time and it's something that I really love so I can just keep talking about it for hours, literally, and I do. So that's all I have for now. Uh, we'll be touching on a couple topics next. FBM, which is when you don't send it to Amazon and you fulfill it yourself. Uh, we'll be discussing how to print labels because remember we talked about the F and SKUs that go on this product when it's bundled or it goes directly on here when you send it single. But then when you put these in a box to ship to Amazon, what happens next? So we'll be talking about the shipping labels and the Amazon labels that you have to put on there. Um, what boxes to use, some of the requirements, like they can't be over 50 pounds, um, how to prepare them inside a box because you don't want the product to arrive damaged. Um, we'll be talking about the cheapest method of shipping and how Amazon offers uh, their courier discounts if you use their courier, uh, typically UPS. Um, I think FedEx is up there now too. For a while it was only UPS. And, uh, you know, and then we'll go into how to obtain feedback every time you place an order. Feedback is like a review for customer service. Um, and remember that helps you grow the buy box. We'll talk about how much quantity to send on a listing. A listing is basically when you go on Amazon and you're looking for a product, you click on a page on Amazon and that page is called a listing or a product page. Uh, so we'll even discuss how much quantity to send for your first time, second time, and how to decide how much quantity to send. Because even that part could be confusing, you know? How do you know how much to send? How do you know if the product you're purchasing is profitable? Um, there's so much to cover, but uh, luckily enough, I've been doing it long enough, and so has Eric, where we got you covered, and uh, we'll keep providing that info that I know you guys, our students have been asking for. Uh, we've been showing a lot of live sessions, uh, but we just felt like it wasn't enough, so you know, we're going to keep posting it right here. and. Uh, Please comment below anything that you guys want to learn about. You'll see we're quick to respond. I think our students a lot. I'm proud to say that our students all the time are saying how quick we respond. They're like, wow, you guys run a multi, multi-million dollar business and you, you, you typically respond within 24 hours. And when I say typically, I mean 99% of the time we're responding within 24 hours or within the first you know, few hours, depending on you know, what day of the week it is. But um, anyways, Rambling on some more. Stay lit, guys. Amazon lit. Please leave comments. You know, let us know suggestions of what kind of information you want to learn, and we'll be sure to provide it. Uh, you know, look forward to growing with you guys. And please, please, message us. Uh, we want to see your growth. We want to see what you guys are doing, and we want to possibly partner with you. So, uh, stay lit, guys. Sebastian from Amazon lit. Looking forward to keep growing with you guys.